Hello friends, welcome back for another video. So this week we are going to be making a leather leaf belt bag and I have been really interested in trying to do some leather crafting ever since I tried to dye my tap shoes, which actually turned out very well. They're very cute. Um, and I really enjoyed that process and thought it was really interesting and cool. So when I saw the like leaf bags going all around social media, I think they're absolutely adorable. There are some that are made out of like cool plant material, like sustainable plant material. Um, and then I always prefer over like vegan leather, genuine leather, simply for the current longevity of most available products. And so I decided that I wanted to attempt to make a leather leaf bag. And so I've purchased all of the materials that I should need. I have a pattern I'm going to follow and I'm going to give it a shot. We will see if this is one of those moments where my how hard could it be gene um, shows up and it, and it actually is quite hard or if it's something that has like a decent amount of transferable skills with the hand sewing and the marking a pattern and cutting it out. So I'm really excited to see if I can pull this off and hopefully it'll turn out like the most adorable little leaf bag that I could ever use. So the plan for today is essentially to get everything laid out, hopefully cut out and see if we can get further than that, that's really my only goal for today is to get all of the pieces cut out and ready to be assembled. And if I can get through everything, that's great. But otherwise, this is definitely going to be a multi-day process for me. And I think the only supplies that I currently don't have are like a way to finish the edges. And so hopefully it goes well and I'm really excited to get started. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. So I have my leather essentially cut to the approximate size that I'll need for the project. And I just have one little part put on to make sure that I can actually like do this without sacrificing a lot of the rest of it. And so I just have a little X-Acto knife and I'm going to attempt to cut this little pattern piece out. So I've cut out the first little piece. This is the part that has the little leaf design on it and will be kind of like that, right? Um, there's still like the side pieces and the front, but the first little piece is cut out. So I've gone ahead and I've cut out like the side piece that kind of wraps up the side of the bag and the inside front. Um, so this kind of gives it the width and then this kind of attaches to the back. So now I'm moving on to some of the smaller pieces, which honestly I'm a little worried about the smaller pieces. I feel like the curves and edges are gonna be harder than the big ones. So I'm gonna really take my time with the smaller pieces so that way hopefully everything turns out looking at least semi-polished and not rushed. I'm essentially Got just enough room to place all of my little pieces here. And I have a round piece somewhere that's hiding. The rounds are gonna be the hardest to get nice and clean, but that'll use up the majority of this particular leather. And I've bought some stuff to possibly make some skirt hikes with the excess leather that I have here so that way it doesn't like go to waste and it has just enough room I think to make at least maybe one or two and so I bought some stuff I don't know if the rivets are going to be big enough it says that it can go up to seven ounces which this is only five ounces so theoretically it should be thin enough to go through but we'll see that's like a if I can get to it um but I'm gonna go ahead and work on cutting out these guys and then I'll meet you guys back here. You can see Mr. P has commandeered my current 
position as trying to cut out leather pieces and is now roly polying all over the pieces while I'm holding a very sharp exacto knife. So it's definitely not safe. It's your paw away from me. He's very happy to be involved in this project. As you can see, he's needing my arm currently. Um, very adorable, hard to concentrate though. We have our two round pieces though, which I found a like special edition quarter that we got as a gift once. Um, and it was the exact size as the pattern piece and it made it cutting out the circles a lot easier. So if you can find something that is like the perfect shape and size for your pattern with leather, I highly recommend it. Okay, so. I have cut out all of the pieces and they have their little pattern on them because there's like little holes. I don't know if it'll, yeah, you can see the little holes. And so I have some tools that I bought and it's like a little set. And you essentially just hit this with like a rubber mallet as hard as you can to essentially punch holes in your leather. So I have to do that for all of the pieces and all of the little holes. These are the right size, I've checked. And I actually checked before I ordered them. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on actually punching the holes in the leather. And I'll probably test on like a scrap piece just to make sure that I am using the right amount of force and I'm getting all the way through the leather in a very clean way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. So I've essentially put holes in all of the pieces where they should be. And that essentially means it's ready for assembly. I have to look up how to do the specific stitching for leather work because I've never done it before. And I know it uses two needles and is like a different method than like typical sewing. But I will say, I made a massive mistake by one, going to the gym this morning Two, the gym was arm day today. And then having to punch holes into leather, I don't know if I'll be able to lift my arms over my head for like the next three days. So be warned of that, unless you are already pretty strong, it is very tiring to hit uh, a bunch of little metal forks into leather over and over again um, to make enough holes for sewing. But I think this is where I'm gonna stop today. I have a bunch of other stuff to do for uh, my like PhD dissertation stuff. And I just really wanted to see if I could get it cut out and ready for assembly. And that way I am just able to focus on sewing and finishing the edges. And then I'll have a cute little leaf bag. But you can kind of see it, you know, how everything's going to attach. So this is like a little button which will allow you to have like a little rope that closes it. And then the back of this is where the little loop will go. And then this is going to allow you to have those two strings go through. I have no idea where this is supposed to go. I think this might also be where the button is, maybe? Seems a bit big for that. So maybe it's down here. I don't know. I'm not sure where this goes. I'll figure it out later, but everything's coming together and is essentially ready to assemble. So we are back for day number two of the little leather leaf bag and I essentially have everything ready to be assembled. So I have beveled the edges, which just kind of like takes the point off of the top of and bottom of the edge so that when I attach it, I can finish the edges and make it look like nice and smooth and shiny. Fingers crossed. I have tested it on a couple pieces to see if I can do it. And it's not perfect, but it is something, if that makes sense. So today we're gonna be actually sewing it all together. And I've looked at a couple videos and I have a general idea of what I'm doing. It doesn't look too complicated. 
Typically, they have something that you wedge your piece in and that holds it so you can get the correct tension, but I don't have that. And so I found a couple things that I could possibly try to do without that. And it looks like it's just going to be hopefully pulling from my crocheting skills, which is like holding tension and sewing. So it looks pretty simple. We'll see how I feel about it once we get started, but that's the plan for today. So let's jump right in. Okay, let's see if this helps at all. Oh, amazing. All right, find yourself some pliers, ladies and gents. Cut us. That sure is something. Okay, so now that the first ones are done, I'm supposed to drop one of the needles, I think the one that's like to your left, and go in through the back, which the back of this leather kind of has like a suede effect, which I think makes it, I mean, all leather has like a fleshy side, you know, but I think it makes it a little bit more difficult to find the hole. All right, I'm gonna use an extra needle to try and like guide the hole for this next spot. All right, I'm going to keep doing this and then I will essentially hopefully show you the little back piece attached to the outside. This is definitely a bit more challenging than I thought it would be and I think it's simply because of the um, like holes not being punched all the way through or just not having a lot of finger strength for something like this. But I'm gonna work on this and then I will hopefully meet you guys back here. So I have finished sewing the little loop on the outside of the bag and it's not perfect. My typical sewing isn't great even on like clothes when it comes to hand sewing. So I had very low expectations, but honestly it looks fine. It's functional, we all know I'm all about functionality and style is just a bonus. So I'll show you guys kind of the stitching up close so you can see what it looks like, but it honestly, it's, it's, it'll work. I think the hardest part is gonna be the other pieces. So here's a look at the little stitches. So you can see the stitching here that I've done. It's on there. It's not perfect. Part of it is also that the cutouts aren't perfect which I was a little nervous about the smaller pieces just because the X-Acto knife is not as easy to control, you know, like you can kind of slip. So they're not perfect, but from a distance, I mean, that six foot rule, it, I live by it. So if it looks good from six feet away, I'm happy about it. And so I'm gonna move on to the next steps, which I think is going to be attaching this little piece here and then attaching these two together. So this is like the front inside pouch that goes on the inside and this gives it the depth of the bag. So the actual bag. I think this is gonna be the most challenging part. So I'm gonna try and get the tiny piece on and start working on the smaller pouch. I will likely film some of it, but probably not all of it. Uh, Obviously the parts that I do film, I'll talk about what I'm doing and maybe chat a little bit. I've got some more project ideas that I would love to run past you guys, but also just kind of chat about what's going on in life and um, I would love to hear what you guys are doing. So as always, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this and then I will hopefully meet you guys in just a couple minutes to start working on the other parts of the bag. I have stitched together the little button that goes on the front of the little leaf bag. And it's pretty circular. It's not perfectly circular, but it's not bad at all. And I might be able to refine it a bit when I finish the edges. But I started working on the detailing on the front of the bag. So a lot of the stitches like on the front are just decorative. I chose the color thread to be very similar to the leather because I was not sure how clean my stitches would be and I didn't want it to be overly noticeable if it looked kind of wonky, you know? So it's a very subtle stitching, but you can kind of tell 
I've done this top one right here. And I think I'm just gonna do the ones that go all the way across first and then do the one down the center. So I'm gonna keep working on this, but it's something that is simple enough that I think I can talk and do it at the same time, which is saying a lot because I usually cannot talk and do something at the same time. Something else I've been kind of thinking about as I've gotten a couple comments that have questions about like, how I got into forest entomology and a little bit more just about me as a person. And rather than doing like a sit down video, because I don't have a good way of collecting questions because most of my subscribers don't follow me on Instagram, which is totally fine. I don't really, I really only post like finished product photos, which you guys end up seeing here anyways. And so because I don't have that, available i don't have like a great way of having people submit questions for like a q a sit down video but i thought it might be interesting to try and do maybe like a live stream while i like work on whatever that week's project is uh, because i don't always film every step so i could like plan it so that a non-crucial step can be filmed well on like live rather than an actual video. And then those who join the live can get sneak peeks and whatever. So if you would be interested in watching or joining a live stream with me where you can like ask actual questions, I'm happy to do so. I love chatting. So I am always like kind of an open book too. There's not many questions that I won't answer. Um, I'm that person that you meet me on the street and we start sharing stories about how, you know, horrific our previous dating life was or our hopes and dreams or our medical issues. That one comes up a lot. And I'm like, yeah, tell me about it. Like, that's the worst, like absolutely sucks. So yeah, I am kind of an open book. So if you guys are interested in a live stream, I'll do like a little community post probably uh, after sometime, honestly, it might be before this video. So if you saw a community post already, um, that's what that's for. But I am interested to see if anyone is wants to join and do that. And I have decent information as to like when people are most active and online typically it's like the weekends in the afternoons which is perfect for me as a grad student that's like the only time i have to actually do anything yeah so i'm thinking about doing a live stream let me know if that sounds good i'm sure i said that 10 times already so my apologies i tend to ramble when i'm on camera and it makes editing absolutely horrible but what can you do Another project that I have kind of in the works is there's a couple of episodes of The Magic School Bus where Miss Frizzle, Lily Tomlin, one of my idols, talks about insects, which as you all know, I'm all about bugs and insects and hexapods, all sorts of stuff, anything really, arthropods in general. But there's a couple episodes where they specifically talk about insects and if you know anything about the Magic School Bus and Miss Frizzle, her outfits almost always match the theme of that episode. So she has two specific dresses that are absolutely adorable. One has ants on it and like a big sunflower. And the other one is like a beehive with uh, like flowers and a cool beehive hat. And so since I'm teaching this semester and teaching about bugs, I thought it'd be really cool to recreate one of her dresses from her bug episodes and wear it to teaching and actually teach in it and be Miss Frizzle for a day. So I am planning on doing that at some point. Hopefully that's after this project, but we'll see how busy I get and whether or not I have time to do all of that because there's a lot of like applique and you know, specific details, but it's so cute and so fun. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I definitely have that on the books and am interested in doing it. So that's what's been inspiring me lately outside of little leaf bags and holidays. 
that are surrounding us. I have finished doing the detailing on the front little leaf of the bag and it looks so cute. I think it turned out well and I think the idea of doing the horizontal rows first and then go down the center was the best option because I feel like it looks as clean as I could get it. And I'll show you guys the detailing of the little leaf. So I think the texture difference looks really good. As I mentioned before, I did not use a contrasting thread for this project. Again, I just wasn't sure how great the stitching was gonna look and I didn't want it to stand out. But now that I have this done, I think I'm going to finish the edges of my button so that I can go ahead and attach that to the front panel and that can be done. And then it'll just be moving on to the inside and the outside. So I will probably work on the little button and that'll be it for today. I am running out of time and I have to go do some stuff for my dissertation and that means putting a pause on the fun craft stuff. So I'll keep working on just like the tiny details and then hopefully the next time that I am back here, we will work on putting the front and the sides together. And then the last step will just be attaching the front and back pieces and essentially finishing the edges. So that's it for today. And then I will see you guys probably tomorrow or another day. We are back for day three now, I think, of the pedal bag. And so I have my little button and I'm gonna try and attach it to the outside of the leaf bag while we chat a little. So, outside of crafting and school, which leaves me very little time, but mostly like an hour or two before bed, I tend to read. And so I've been getting back into reading, which as a kid, I was like a big reader. Most kids are that I know um, that were my friends. So must be readers attract readers. But I used to love reading to the point where I didn't want to go outside for recess in elementary school. I just wanted to stay inside and read. And so I would just do that and or go sit outside and read. And I've always kind of been a big reader, but in the last like four years or so since being in grad school, I have done less of it. And it's probably because I'm sitting there and like having to read academic papers and all sorts of stuff for my job essentially. And then when it comes time to read for fun, I don't really wanna read anymore. My eyes are tired or, you know, my brain's tired. But I've been trying to combat that a little bit by reading just before bed, like I mentioned. And so I had started to read romance books, like fantasy romance books, which I had never read before. And so I read like the popular Sarah J. Mass book series and it was good, but um, obviously I'm not, I'm, I'm not obsessed with it. I think it's a great, like it was a good series and a great intro if you've never read anything with spice in it, but yeah. It's, it's a good series. That's, that's all I'll say about that. Um, and then I tried to read another one that was like a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And that was too much for me personally. Um, I, I jumped a couple levels between Sarah J Mass and that series. But I still read like, I think it was two out of the four books, maybe even three out of the four. I think I'm DNFing, so not finishing, did not finish. Um, the third book because I just cannot get past the character. She's annoying. The whole series is just 90% smut, 0% world building, you know? And I'm like such a big fantasy reader that that's not what I'm looking for. Um, so when I told my friend this, I was like, yeah, I'm like not really finding anything that I like. And I started a new series that I thought would work. Um, but it ended up being just as annoying as 
the other ones like i i keep running into a dilemma of a like main character typically female who is described as being like super broad and like stronger than most men kind of thing or stronger than those around her but like extremely petite at the same time like I, they, it's contradictory how they talk about some of the characters it's like oh she's really tall and broad but like i don't know i love that they're combating the damsel in distress stereotype but sometimes it feels like they're going completely the other way and making a like like a stereotype like it doesn't feel like a well-rounded character when she's just unaware that she's beautiful can charm anyone like that's her secret skill and so she's kind of like i don't know what i i just wasn't liking it i needed a break from that and so she recommended this series because her husband picked it up in college and there was like a half of a page of a PG-13 sex scene. And he was like, oh, this is romance. This is like a romance book. And I don't think he read it. And so she started reading it because she's like, I, I have to know what he thinks is romance. And it ends up being just a really great trilogy of books. I just finished it last night, actually. Um, and I really liked it. It was nice. And um, the main character is essentially just like this head on her shoulders, little witch she's living on her own making it work um and she's just yeah she's rational she has feelings but also you know can be naive at times like it just felt very human like very well like a great character development that i feel like i had been missing in some of the other books i had been reading as of late and so i really enjoyed that and i'm hoping that this like kickstarts me into reading more. Typically, I do read like at least a book a year, right? Like even on my years where I'm like not really that big into reading, I end up reading at least a book. But this year, since I've already started off strong, I've already got three books down. Um, I want to continue going and hope that that ends up working out for me. So that's kind of what I've been doing outside of crafting and uh, school is reading primarily. So if anyone has like similar uh, tastes in books, like if you like fantasy and that kind of stuff, let me know if you have any good recommendations in the comments because I would love to have like a nice stockpile of good books to read this year. This pattern like did not come with written instructions. So I'm just kind of winging it based on what I know about hand stitching leather and hoping that it'll be functional which is all I care about right we said it probably 10 times during this video functionality over fashion but I still really like the fashion part of stuff so don't get me wrong but I think this will work I'm just gonna go back up and I guess I don't know how you would like backstitch on this. Maybe I'll just make a knot. I'm just gonna knot it like I would actual sewing underneath of here and then just burn it because this is like a synthetic waxy thread. So when you burn it, it just kind of like seals itself together. So if I do that with both sides, I think it'll work out. Okay, so I think we have ourselves a little button. All right, now that the button is on, I'm going to attempt to do this little section. I might burnish the edges of this before I get started because I've just got this little gum, burnishing gum, um, and this little wooden tool that I use to like burnish it. It's not perfect. This is definitely not going to be professional quality, but I think it, it'll work. I think it'll work for the first time. Um, and then if I decide to try other projects, I might look into better ways of doing this or maybe even posting on like a subreddit and asking for advice on how to 
do better next time. For this time, I'm just gonna do what I can with the research that I've done and what I saw and heard was that burnishing gum is pretty good and to use a little tool to make the edges essentially finished, if you will. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that and sew it onto the base and then I think I'll meet you guys back here when we put these two together and I actually found out that this piece that I was talking about earlier is for a different design. So the bag pattern came with like multiple designs and this was for like a non-leaf one to act as like the little button, I guess, or like a little design feature for under the button. But for the leaf bag, it's just the little, the little button. So I'm gonna work on that. As always, I will meet you guys back here in just a few minutes. I just finished putting the little tie part here. So that has now been attached and now it's time to put the edge with the front piece. And you're supposed to overlay them and just kind of, I guess, turn it as you go. I feel like this is gonna use a lot of thread. So I'm just gonna do a bunch and hope that that's enough. I guess we'll find out whether or not I've used enough. Actually, before I sew these together, since it looks like you overlap them, I think I'm gonna burnish the edges of each piece because it looks like it'll be overlapped like this. So there's like an outside bit, essentially. I'm gonna do that. And since I haven't shown that on camera, I guess I can do that now. Um, got my little tool. Got my gown. And it's kind of hard with leather. Like it's so thin and like wobbly, I guess. I don't find it particularly easy to like rub it on the little tool, which I'm assuming it's just a combination of like the friction and the gum that ends up making like this shiny edges. I know some people can also, like you can use beeswax too. I didn't have beeswax and the gum was easy to get off Amazon, which I typically don't love supporting them. I think I've mentioned that before in my videos. I actually tried against all other odds. The rest of my materials came straight from like a leather crafting company. So I didn't do that. But yeah, and this, I kind of think of this like lash glue, if you've ever worn false eyelashes, it says to do it like it's best when it's like kind of tacky, like half dried essentially. So I feel comfortable just putting it on the entire edge before I actually start rubbing it on the tool. I don't know. It works okay. Obviously, it's probably something that comes with practice and like knowing like how much stuff to put on. I also put on like, like I said, I treat it like lash glue. So it's like a very thin layer of this product, just enough that like I can see a color change, but not enough that there's like actual product sitting on the sides. A little update in my academic world. So I have a committee meeting this week, so it'll be done by the time that this video is posted, um, where we decide like prelims and they get to hear about my progress and I'm very nervous for it. Uh, I do not love criticism. I don't think anyone does, but I take it particularly hard. I don't know if I just never got that life skill. Um, so I'm a little nervous about that. My main advisor is great. She's typically really good at making me feel confident, even if there is stuff to improve on. And so I'm a little nervous about that. But other than that, I've just been working on trying to get my research wrapped up and going. I have to write a grant proposal, or I guess, yeah, it's technically a grant proposal 
um, to fund my survey because we don't have currently the funds for my third part of my dissertation. And so that's going to be fun. I have to do that before March. So I've been working on it kind of here and there, but trying to focus on it now that the test prep is o over for my forest entomology class that I'm teaching. For the review, I started doing this thing last year when I did the lab, when I taught like the lab section. I essentially put together a Jeopardy game for the exam, like with probably 75% of the questions being like actual content that's on the exam, not verbatim, but like the topic. So like if I ask them to say, what's the difference between this and this, they would have to understand both terms and be able to compare the differences. And then on the exam, it would only be asking about one, that kind of thing. Um, only four students showed up in person. I did have one person online via Zoom. Um, and I have like these little buttons that they push and they make ridiculous noises. Um, and I, of course, brought candy. So hopefully people will talk about how helpful it was. I did get great feedback. They're like, wow, I haven't ever been to a study session that was this productive and fun at the same time which made me feel very happy. I'm definitely gonna like touch in with the students that showed up and see after the first exam how they feel and if they felt it was helpful or if they have any suggestions on ways to make it better for them without just outright giving them the answers to the exam, which is super tricky. If you've never had to write an exam review, it's so hard to like put it together in a way that encourages people to study the right things, but doesn't just outwardly give them all of the answers on the exam or like the questions on the exam. It's wild. So that was a little stressful for me this week because I had no idea what I was doing. I think I have burnished the edges as much as I can for now on this piece. It looks okay. Not perfect, but it essentially makes it just like shiny and protected, I think, is the idea. Um, I think I'll probably have to do this curved part, but I guess I should probably do that now. Uh, okay, I'm gonna finish burnishing these two and then um, we'll start sewing the front and side together and we'll go from there. This video is already kind of getting long, so I'm gonna try to skip, not skip a couple steps, but get through a couple things before I jump back on and finish the bag. The leaf bag is essentially halfway stitched um, front and back. And I'm just taking a break from that because my hands kind of hurt from stitching and decided to start thinking about the skirt hikes. So I've cut out a strip of leather. I don't even know how long it is, one second. It's about like 12 and a quarter. And so I'm gonna cut out two of these I think or maybe just one, I might just do one. Um, but I have this and I have tested out the rivets here. And it looks like that's gonna work. So I have rivets and I have these like little D rings that I thought I could use as the little skirt hikes. And so yeah, I just am going to finish the edges like I have with everything else. And then I'm going to essentially put these together in the back like that so that it makes a little skirt height. I might even put an extra one up here to make it so it'll be like three. So that way it's, it goes on the belt and it's nice. I'm gonna try and do this and hopefully it turns out well. I've actually never used a skirt hike either, so I understand the concept and I know you like put your skirt through one part and then the other. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and as always, just like last time, I'll meet you guys back here. We did it. So I have my little skirt hike. See here. So this should just attach to the little belt and will give me like some extra ways of 
having little belt attachments. So I think that looks quite nice. It was very simple. You just fold it over and it's ready to go. Welcome to the wrap up of the little leaf bag that I made this week. So it's kind of hard to compare what I would do differently with a project that uses completely new techniques and a new material to me. But if I had to go for some improvements just based off of my general experience working with leather for the first time, I would try to get something that would cut the leather better than an X-Acto knife. I find that that's something that um, I felt I w had a hard time getting clean edges and ultimately I feel like that leads to a cleaner looking product, like end product. However, outside of that, I think it went really well for like a first project. Obviously there's some techniques within leather working like burnishing the edges, which I think as I've said in the video earlier, uh, is kind of like something that comes with practice and skill, but it ended up being a lot easier than I thought it would be. So if you are a sewist or can crochet, you can definitely do this project. I feel like it's not that much different from sewing outside of you're just doing it always by hand and it's like a different uh, type of stitching, but overall it's the same concept. And it honestly didn't take that long. Uh, I know it seems like it did. I just, again, grad student, don't have a, all the time in the world. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's video. This project, I think, trumps my pedal bags for me. I think I'm gonna use this one a lot more. The pedal bag is adorable and I love how many different like pockets it has and how much I can carry. But in terms of like a day-to-day -day basis, this is really nice. It fits my phone, it fits my keys, it fits a couple other things that I like absolutely need. So it's really nice just to have this on my outside where I can easily access it. Instead of like, I have a backpack that I use when I'm on campus and sometimes it's a pain in the butt to take my backpack off to get my phone or my keys or whatever it is that I need. So I love this. And skirt hike, honestly, is just an added bonus. It works really well. So if you are ever wanting skirt hike and you can find some inexpensive leather and uh, little rivets and little D rings or circle rings, go for it because you can do it. I promise it's so easy. And it kind of just adds to the whole look and now I don't have to buy them. I know how to make them myself. So I had a lot of fun this week. I do not think I will be posting next week. My next project is working on recreating a Miss Frizzle dress that has a bunch of ants and stuff on it. And that's gonna take a little bit of time. So I don't think that's gonna happen next week, but I'm thinking that I'll do the live stream next weekend. So probably Saturday or Sunday of next weekend. So I don't know what date that is. So that'll probably be February 24th or 25th. And I think I only had about 25 people respond in total so far, but it's 50-50. So half of the people would be interested in joining. So that's at least 10 people and I'm fine with that. Um, I just wanted to have an opportunity to answer some of those questions and get to chat with you guys real time because I think that would be a lot of fun. So I'll be working on my Miss Frizzle project and chatting next weekend. And my next upload will be 
the weekend after that. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video and that'll hold you guys over and then we can do the live stream while I work on this one. So until next time, I will see you then. Thank you.